In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to connect your atom stack laser to Lightburn and how to make an engraving and a cut with it, okay? So I've got my power plugged in. i got my USB plugged in to the computer. I'm going to power it on. So i got the red light. We're good. And I hear the fan of the laser. Okay. So next thing we're going to do, we're going to go to Lightburn here, click on Devices, and just hit Find My Laser. If this doesn't work, we can create manually, but it should just be able to find it. So it's going to take a second. It's going to scan around. And that shouldn't take long. I guess I have a couple of serial devices that I've hooked up. There it is. Okay. So it recognizes it as iLaser firmware. Okay. On COM9. Okay. Keep that in mind. It's on COM9 and it's I, I laser. Okay. We'll hit add device. I'm going to call, let's see, I have the Atom Stack A5M50. So I'm going to call it the Atom Stack A5M50. Give it the full name. Okay. Hit next. Hit next. It has a homing cycle. I don't know why it doesn't allow you to add it. Maybe it didn't see it when it scraped it. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to select that laser now and hit OK. Okay? So we're close, but it was on COM9, right? So we got to go over here, hit COM9. Okay. And then we're going to hit Home. So what should happen is this thing should find Home. There it goes. All right, it's homed. Perfect. Okay, one more thing we're going to look at. So if I go to the console here, I can log into it and figure out all the internal settings. One setting I want to look at is the 30. This is the amount of power or the... This is the number you need to send the laser to get it full power, right? See where it says 1,000? So S max is 1,000 on this thing. <clears throat> I'll show you where that is in the Lightburn software. So you go to Edit, Device Settings, and S value max, perfect, it's at 1,000. That's exactly what you want it at. If it's at 255, you're too low, okay? So make sure when you go into your settings that your S value is at 1,000, okay? And I think it will turn on Auto Home at startup. I'd prefer it to Auto Home. Okay. Let's see, we'll call all that good. All right. Let's see what other settings do we have. Oh, yeah, I sped mine up. <laughs> Typically, 111 is at 6,000 also, but I moved mine up to 20,000 because I know it can go faster. Okay, so let's go back to cuts and layers, and let's actually make a design for this thing. So it comes with these little uh, wood pieces here, right? So when I teach people how to laser things, I usually make a keychain. So we'll uh, we'll do something like that. So I'm going to set the piece of wood here, and we'll get to designing. So first of all, we need a square on the outside. On the left side is your tools. So with the square tool on, it's going to keep making squares, right? You need to go back to the selector tool and select the things and delete. Also, if you make a bunch of shapes, if I were to select left to right, everything inside my box gets selected. If I were to select right to left, Everything it touches is selected. So even though this part and this part aren't fully enclosed, they're still going to be selected because I went right to left. But if I go left to right, it has to be fully enclosed to be selected. Okay. Let's take a look at this here. Where's our delete? There it is. Okay, so here's the initial part. I like to design in millimeters. If you like inches, that button's right here. So you can make this thing you know, two inches, or I can go to millimeters and make it 50 millimeters. They're about the same. Okay, height is, I'll go like, yeah, 25. I'll make it kind of square. Oh, see how it raised the width also? I gotta turn off the lock to change the aspect ratio. There we go. I'm gonna turn the lock back on because I typically like them to stay the same. Okay, I'll do a circle here. I'm gonna hold down shift. So it makes a perfect circle, and then I'll select it, and I'll make the width like four millimeters, I think. And because that locks on, it should change the height to four also. There we go. Cool. Move it in the corner. Something like that. All right. Let's bring out our text tool, and let's type in keys. There we go. 
and I'm going to center it in here. So I'll let's find the center point. It should change the cursor. There it is. The cursor change right there. And now I want to make it smaller, but from that center point. So I'm going to hold down Control and bring it in. Okay, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to bring it down, but I want to bring it straight down, so I'm going to hold Shift. Huh, that just wants to be in the way. That's okay. We'll put that on the other side. There we go. Same thing. <laughs> All right, so now that we got our design here, we need to turn it into different cut styles, right? So I want keys to be a, an engraving or a filling. So I'm going to make that, I'll make it green. And I want this to cut first before the outside. I'll make it red. Okay. So with the green, I want it to be a fill. Okay. Now, if your fill doesn't show up like filled in like this, go to Window and choose Filled Smooth. It might be on Wireframe Smooth. So even though it's set to a fill, it's not actually like showing that it's filled. So Window, Filled Smooth. If you have any issues with where your windows are, what's going on out here, and you want to reset it to default, you go Window, Reset to Default Layout, and that's going to bring you back to Basics here. Okay. So let's see, we've got keys in green, we've got the hole in red, and the outline cut in black. Okay, so I want it to engrave this first, I want to cut this out second, and then engrave that last. So over here under my layers, I'm going to select this one, I'm going to bring it down with the arrows on the right. If you have a newer version, you should be able to actually take it and drag it down, but this is an older version of Liper, and I'll eventually grab a new license for it. Okay. So this laser right here, like the machine, the whole machine, it's it's pretty good. But the actual laser diode is like, it's great. <laughs> like it's it's a great little machine. It cuts very small, fine lines. It cuts well, like it engraves nicely. It does grayscale. I haven't seen like a high power laser ever do good grayscale before until this one. So when we check out our feeds and speeds, we'll keep that in mind here. So here's our keys. Right? And we just want to go back and forth. Let's take a close look at that. So I want to go back, forth, back, forth. That's what it's set. And it's going to go up 0.1 millimeters. So it's going to engrave, go up 0.1, engrave that way, go up 0.1 millimeters, engrave that way. Right? I can set it to different thicknesses, different, like, cross hatching, all sorts of stuff like that. But I'll leave it like this. And, yeah, we'll do fill all shapes at once. That's all good. Okay. And then the cuts and the cuts. Okay, so the fill speed, maybe like 120, 150, we'll do 150, and max power 100. There we go. Nice thing about the diode lasers is you can run those at 100% all day. Like the CO2s will die really fast, but diode lasers are made to run at 100%. So they might not cut as fast, and there's certain things they can't cut, like clear acrylic, but... Yeah, you can run them harder, and they're still going to last longer than a CO2. So long run, it's good for the money. Okay, so we got speed of 150 and power 100 for engraving the the green part. Next one, I think 5 is a good speed. And then, uh, I don't understand what min and max power is. I looked it up once, but I don't think I cared. <laughs> okay, one pass should be able to cut through this little piece of wood. And this should be the exact same since they're both cutting it out just different orders. Okay. So this is looking good. What I'm going to do next is check my preview button. It sort of looks like a monitor up top. Oh, I guess, by the way, all my layers are down here. Didn't quite have them in scene. So to change the layers, you select something and then you, you know, select a color or a layer for it to be under. Okay. So... Here's our preview button. This is going to show me exactly what the laser is going to be told to do. So this little slider bar, this is our timeline. So right now it's going to cut out that circle, going to cut out the squares, and then do the engraving. That is not the right order. Hit OK. That's because that needs to be last. OK. Let's check out the preview again. There we go. This time it's going to do that circle first, do this engraving, and cut it out. Perfect. Okay, looking good. And you can literally see, like, every single movement. So it, 
it starts from down here, right? You see this little red line? Comes over here, cuts a circle, moves down here, right? Goes across, comes up 0.1 millimeters, goes across, comes up 0.1 millimeters, goes across. So it shows you every single move it's going to do here in the preview. So you can make sure it's not like... Like, let's say I was designing and I had the tiniest thing up there, right? Oh, tiniest thing up there. And I totally didn't know it. And I check my preview. Whoa, what's that up there? Right? So it can also show you, like, artifacts that might have snuck their way onto your design file. Okay. So light burn is ready. Okay. Let's get our laser ready. So laser's still on. That's good. Uh, let's go to the move layer, the move tab. And let's see, we set our distance and our speed for our move. I'm going to do 25 millimeters and 1,000 speed. So if I hit right, there we go. Go up and up. Okay. Now uh, I have it on the metal plate here. Okay. I want to unscrew my, my laser holder and bring it up a bit. Set my wood down that I'm trying to cut. Set my little focusing plate down here. Loosen this up and drop it on there. Okay. There we go. And then woods and the laser is pointing at the lower left part of that wood. That should be fine. All right. So now, let's see. Everything here is good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can frame it. That's right. So I can hit the frame button. And it'll do an outline of about what it's going to cut. And that looks pretty good. I'll do it one more time. Looking good. Now I just hit play. Right, so there it's coating in the upper corner. It's going to go back and forth. Nice acceleration. Okay, weird smell. I don't know what type of wood this is. It looks like birch, but it does not smell like birch. But it cuts and it looks nice. <laughs> cool. Hey, you'll see our uh, our move panel change to overrides. So if it's not engraving fast enough or we wanted to engrave like slower, we can change that right in here as it's running. Uh, yeah, how long is this going to take? Let's see. We can hit the preview button. Okay, a minute, 34 seconds. We can do that. All right. Oh, sounds like it's almost done engraving. Oh, there it goes around the outside. Oh, we could have uh, softened the corners too, darn. I could have uh, used the radius tool, brought it down to like, I don't know, point or three. There we go. Selected that, waited for the mouse to change. Could have done this. That would have been nicer, but whatever. Well, let's do straight cuts. It looks like it's just about done there. Oh, there it is. Cool. So I'm going to use my move tab and move it out of the way. Okay. And so as I lift this up, beautiful. Look at that. Great cut. Really nice and tight. See that? This needs to pop out. There we go. Maybe there it is. All right. I'll always know which keys are my keys <laughs> because of this key tag. Kind of cool, huh? So, yeah, that's how you set up your Atom Stack with Lightburn. Uh, depending on which actual laser head you get, like this one is uh, the 5 watt uh, with all the lens correctioning, so it makes a beautiful small beam. So, these are settings just for this laser. If you have the more powerful one, it's going to cut a lot faster. You might have one of the weaker ones. So these settings might not be perfect for you. But, uh, you know, try it out. Like, like, see if these settings work. If it doesn't go all the way through, then, you know, maybe slow it down. If it just obliterates and smokes everything, maybe speed it up. <laughs> but, yeah, that's how you connect the Atom Stack to Lightburn. Thanks for watching.